data being transmitted. Signal. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Elling. I'm the coordinator of the RPM Challenge. Uh, it is February 12th. Oh, my God. February is, uh, we are knee deep in February. <laughs> um, and uh, that kind of hurts uh, if you're if you're trying to make a record in that month, uh, like some people are. Maybe you're you are one of them. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, record production month, uh, make an album uh, or an EP or a single. And it's been going on for 17 years now. Is that 18? Oh my gosh. I don't even know. <laughs> Started in 2006. That's uh, that I do know. Um, and uh, yeah, we're over the this month, we're uh, presenting a couple of workshops in partnership with uh, various organizations. Lanya Vanya is one of them. Um, and uh, last night they held a uh, rager. <laughs> in St. John's, um, uh, dance through the ages. Uh, and, uh, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, they're, they're Lanya Vanya is a St. John's festival. Um, and, uh, Sarah Harris is joining us from that festival. Hello, Sarah. How are you? Hello. How's it going? Um, um yeah, I didn't, I was not dances through the ages. You weren't there. I'm, yeah. I'm in Montreal, but it looked like a blast. Yes, I'm hurting today. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks, guys. <Ugh. clears throat> um, but uh, it was a lot of fun. People had a blast. Um, yeah, so um, today's workshop, Sarah, uh, tell me about uh, how, how, it, how it all came together. Yeah, so we're, uh, we really wanted to do a workshop about making electronic music and um and i was a per perfect fit um it's gonna be cool uh probably just read a bit of your bio anna westcott montreal based musician and composer working primarily in samples or sorry with samples and analog synthesis projects are including hrt which is a live focused ebm that's electronic body music, I guess, influenced band. And uh, recently did the soundtrack for Grown in Darkness, which is directed by Devin Shears. And this workshop's going to explore free tools for creating and recording electronic music. So I'm pretty excited to see what's in store. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, just before, uh, hello, hello, Anna, how are you? Hi, I'm good. <laughs> Um, it's, it's uh, grown in darkness. Uh, Devin Shears, excellent friend of mine. Uh, and uh, his that film is it was so lovely, and uh, I love the music. And yeah, thank you for for making that happen. <laughs> I didn't know it was you. Um, uh, yeah, I worked with Devin like all, all his films. Uh, okay, yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, so uh, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for doing this today. Uh, uh, how did you like, uh, how did you get into electronic music? Let's, let's start uh, there. I don't know, you know, you're in like your mid 20s, you hear New Order for the first time. Yes. And uh, it just changes things. So I bought a synthesizer and a drum machine. And uh, now my room is full of garbage <laughs> electronic instruments but the thing is that there's like a huge barrier to access uh for what i normally do right um like in the synth zone there's just like a lot of things that you know if you're doing something like rpm for example um the barrier to access to like make music the way I normally do is just like way too high. Um, so I think it's nice to explore some options to do weird stuff in the most janky way possible. Love it. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> And speaking of jank, uh, well, the janky, uh, like our setup, we had a little bit of trouble getting this ready, but um, but I'm I'm very excited 
for how it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to sound great. It's also going to look janky, but cool. So uh, that's how it's like. Um, yeah. So, so uh, is, is there anything you'd like to say before you get started? Or um... Okay, so process-wise, I'm just going to be trying to compose a track on the spot um, using a few different softwares. Um, I'm going to be going from the iPhone to Reaper to VCV Rack, back to Reaper, stuff like that. Um, and stuff like VCV Rack, which is just like um, software-based URAC emulator, definitely has like a knowledge barrier uh, because URAC is awful. Um, so I'll try to not spend too much time in there. Yeah. Exciting. Full track. Um, yeah, so I put, uh, the people out there who are watching, uh, there are a number of people on on uh, Facebook and YouTube and uh, someone on Twitch. And if anybody has any uh, comments or questions uh, throughout, uh, we'll wait for a break uh, and I can call out and uh, we can present the questions to her at that moment. So yeah, there we go. Cool. All right, do I, do I get started? Yeah, let's go. Okay, so the way that we're going to be looking at the GarageBand app is I'm going to put you in my lap and you're going to look at me using my telephone. Um, okay, so first off, this is uh, GarageBand for iPhone. So if you have an Android, this part's not going to be super helpful. Um, but we'll get to other options later and we can uh, find a way to do that. So first off, um, this app is hilarious. Uh, I downloaded it for the first time like last week. Um, one of my friends primarily uses it to make music and I think it's like, for something that's free, like comically powerful, um, like, okay, sampler, for example, we're gonna go into the settings and we are going to make a very short sample just to start off. Um, I'm going to use my voice. Okay, and we are going to, no, we're not going to reverse it. We're going to, sorry, I'm in details and we're going to change the envelope a little bit. Uh, first off, it would be like, can you hear that, Ellen? Yes, it's uh, it changes the screen. I, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to disable my video so that uh, you, um, we show both at the same time. So anyway, we want to soften oh, that up. Yeah. What? What? Sorry. What is the? Um, what is the name of the app again? This is GarageBand. What is a GarageBand? Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> um, Classic. The 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 yeah the, the famous. Yeah. Uh, so you know that sounds fine. Let's let it loop. Cool, that sounds like something. Um, and let's uh, just add a little spice, some reverb. And like one thing I want to 
emphasize is goofing around is, I don't know, a good way to approach something like this that feels more like a toy than anything else. Um, just, you know, going to sub menus, adding things. Until it sounds like something. Um, okay. So we made a silly little sample with my voice. Um, I'm going to hit record and play a chord. And then I'm going to record another chord because playing this thing is god awful. So I'm going to put some fingers on the screen. Okay, uh, I'm going to move this track or something maybe. Okay, I'm going into the editing view. I'm going to move it over here. Oh my God. Okay, so one of the awful things about doing this stuff on a telephone is everything's very small. <laughs> I guess some people have really big telephones, so have fun with that. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that's the card. All right. We have some chords. Um, how do I add? Oh, like that. And we can start playing with these a little bit. Um, okay, in menus like this, you'll get things like octave and semitone transposition, which is just editing the MIDI notes. So when you hit record, it doesn't record the audio, it's recording MIDI tracks. And um, MIDI tracks, if you don't know, um, it's just like digital information about what notes are being played, what velocities, stuff like that. So one nice thing about that is say we have this chord and we want to test it with a different synth. You could just add it, copy that into it and play with it. Um, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to be doing is doing some trimming and copy and pasting. Actually, let's make this shorter. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, does this record one note? Wait, let me... Yes, we are in the jank zone. Uh, I need to record a new sample and I have no idea what the pitch of the previous voice thing I did was. Actually, you know what? No, we're doing it in the same track. It's fine. Let's trim this baby. Uh, is the screen like viewable? Can you see this? Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't read all of the text that's on there, but uh, it like on the green, it's a little hard to read. But I, I can get the gist of what you're doing. Yeah, the gist is great because yeah. this is just a mess. <laughs> but that's kind of how I want it to be. Um. Okay, let's uh see what we're working with so you're taking a phrase and repeating it a few times shortening it 
or yeah what you're doing okay and the sequence i'm going to just well we'll play first i'll start adjusting some settings um okay a garage band thing uh so this is like the tracking view whatever um up here you have like no effects please go away <laughs> settings um there's like a compressor for each, some EQ, master effects, echo and reverb. And you can also go track settings, do other weird stuff in here. And what I do wanna emphasize is do all the weird stuff. Go into the menus, play with things like, you know, historically industrial music, like severed heads were just, putting microphones in watermelons and smashing them to use as percussion, you know? So I would like for part of this to be embracing the jank and pushing it as far as you can. Okay, so the last one only recorded one note, so um, we delete and we try again. This will be going somewhere eventually, I swear. Yeah, that's good. Did it record? All right, good enough. Um, all right, cool. Now, uh, I would like to, uh, I'll listen to this first and then I'll mess it up. Sure, whatever. Um, let's just crank some verb on this. Oh, you can't go wrong with reverb. No, and way too much wet. And crank some treble, mess it up. Uh, some master delay. Sounding magical and janky already. Yeah, so, you know, we could loop that a few times, build up a little base for our track. Um, okay, well, there's a silly little drum sequencer in here somewhere. Is it this? Oh, this thing's awful. Okay, I'm going to do the drums in Reaper. Right? Or this is a silly beat sequencer thing. Oh, yeah, this is actually funny as hell. Um, this is a step sequencer. Uh, it is clear how it works. And this is kind of awful because everything sounds awful <laughs> but if you can make that work for yourself like these are god awful drum sounds um so let's not track drums in here we'll track drums in reaper using a weird sampler vst i found oh please be gone um while we're here let's make some more samples um i'm going to move this computer okay so i have a pot lid that i really like the sound of 
So we're going to record that. And basically all I'm doing right now is just using GarageBand to create a few little layers. I'm going to airdrop it to my MacBook and then open the file in Reaper and then chop it up. So I'm just creating a bunch of source materials right now to then later chop up. Um, this is the pot lid. I'm going to hit record. Beautiful. That is good. That is nice. Yeah. Pitch down, right? Okay. So it's a sample. So you can... Yeah. I mean, you can play chords with the pot lid. <laughs> it's lovely. That sounds like an intro for a BBC <laughs> TV show. <laughs> All right. Now the news. So let's record just some hits of this. Uh, Maybe we'll add effects in here. No, not here. All right. So, I mean, overdrive, why not? Who cares? Track reverb, why not? Who cares? Beautiful. All right. <laughs> I think there's something obscuring the, the camera. Oh, oh, my yeah. hair and... I think it's your uh... hair. <laughs> Do we actually want those to be in separate places? Oh, there. Beauty. Oh, this track length is all messed up. Okay, I know I'm navigating a bunch of screens and not really explaining what's going on, but also kind of just got get like get into the app and move around. It's not intuitive, and there's no real good way to explain what's going on. But all that to say, I'm just messing around. Beautiful. Okay, let's record another hit. All right, I am going to just straight up airdrop this to my laptop. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me one second. Actually, um, so is this a process that you go through quite often? Is it like, a, is this how you start tracks sometimes? Never. This Never. is all new tech to me. Um, really? Yeah. I, well, when I got the, email about potentially doing the workshop, I was like, I'm not going to use like thousands of dollars of synthesizers to do a workshop for an RPM. Yeah. Um, so I just started asking friends about like free things they use to make music. Uh, and my friend showed me this hilarious app. Um, and I did Google some other VSTs are free, which we'll be going through, but this is not part of my process. I don't like computers. I don't like being on them. Right. So my process is always like on hardware. Um, but this is uh, like an ambient thing I worked on when I just got the app. Right. Just as like a, Example of where you could go with just messing around.
you know? That's just on this little silly iPhone app. It's free. It sounded great. I mean, it's, uh, it, sounded, it's, it sounded it's it had some Zoom quality to it, but uh, it, uh, <laughs> I, I could tell that it was. It, uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's a half deep program, even though it's kind of complicated, like not complicated, but uh, weird decisions in there and stuff. I've, yeah, I've never really played around with GarageBand. I really get, ought to. I honestly highly recommend. It's it's very funny. Okay, how do I airdrop piano? If uh, if anybody out there uh, watching has any hot tips for uh, using GarageBand on your on your phone, or like uh, if if that's how you got started, um, yeah, just uh, let us know. I, Aaron on YouTube says uh, with the GarageBand mobile it takes practice, but you can do a lot. And see, and just yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't really explore that much. Um, Yeah. I'm in. Okay, I'm gonna start sharing from my other MacBook. We're good. Yep, I can see that. Okay. Reaper. Okay, and let's just make sure the levels aren't going to be ridiculous. So you airdrop the like an M. Yeah, I see an M four A there. It's just like a standard export function on GarageBand? Yeah, like I just hit share mm -hmm. and it did the same for me. Um, okay, let's just bring the volume down for a sec. Can you hear that? You, no, I cannot. No? No, uh, d uh, there, oh. there was an option. Yeah, there was an share option audio. on share screen, share audio, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, click share stereo if you if it's there too. There we go. We're in. We're in. All right, cool. Um, so this is Reaper. It's a free DAW. They will ask you to occasionally pay for it, but they don't actually want your money. I know people are probably familiar with Reaper. Okay. So we have a little ambient thing going on. Um, let us insert a virtual instrument on a new track. And is it? No, it's called like. Yeah. All right. I found this recommended on reddit.com as a free sampler. And it is pretty sick and very straightforward to use. I'm going to clear out some of the default samples because they sound like that. And I'm going to add in some of my own samples. Sorry about this. Okay. 
So for samples that you're not creating on your silly little GarageBand iOS app, um, if you're a SoulSeek user, you can just like, I don't know, Google like any drum machine that's ever existed, uh, any synth, and you'll find someone that has like a library for you to download. Um, and it rules, I highly recommend it. It's a funny way to do things, but I'm going to load in uh, wait, let me stop sharing for a second while I browse my private files. I'll find the, sorry, I should have been a little bit more organized. Um, where are my samples? Desktop, samples. Oh, I just found a uh, a neat library of uh, vintage synthesizers on that I can share as well uh, from a uh, website called Pleasure or PrincipalPleasure.com. I don't know. Put it in there. Okay, so I'm going to cheat and use some samples I've previously created. Um, to build up a little drum machine. Oh, actually, this seems smart enough. We'll start making fast progress since we get in here. How long have we been doing this, by the way? Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've been going for about uh, 25 minutes. Okay, great. So we're barely started. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, obviously, if you're not familiar with a bunch of drum machines, doing something like this is not... So you're, yeah, you're just navigating through your browser to load the individual sound files yeah yeah and this is like all the um, samples from my my main hardware sampler mm -hmm. uh oh nasty okay whatever that's a drum kit who cares and let's do something really stupid and Let's turn that into a sample really quick. So, oh. Sure. So, I'm just, I don't know, cutting this down, trimming a little bit. I'm going to turn this into a little bell. I'm going to turn it into a little sample and then we're going to load into our sampler. I feel like this is way less hacky than just using um, GarageBand iOS. I feel like I'm doing real stuff right now. It's harder to follow along with, but we're having fun. Um, sure. Let's 
question. So you're rendering a, uh, just like a bouncing a, a, an audio file of a processed version of the bell or the- Yes, but I did do it wrong because oh, okay. I didn't have it soloed. And that's to import into the sampler, is that right? Yes. That looks so like it worked. Yeah, it worked, <laughs> but it didn't trim. It's okay. Silence is, you know, it's not a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's open the bell. Uh, desktop. Right, to keep my privacy. Yes, yeah. Cool. So All right, this is Reaper. We're going to use those things that we record in GarageBand in some capacity. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, a little vibe to go under a little beat. So where's, oh yeah. So I'm just going to, oh, who is that? You're not MIDI. Cool. Uh, weird thing, Reaper. Uh, if you hold Command and just drag it, it creates MIDI. Really? Um, and our samples are somewhere. They start at where? Okay, don't let me name you. That's okay. I don't care. All right, whatever. I'll just remember. C2. Okay. C2, I'll write it down. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to just draw on some kick drums. Wrong 16th notes. And a tempo will be 142. Who cares? <laughs> uh, go where it is. Okay. Cool. We'll add some stuff later. Let's just get this gross little bass drum going. So, oh, turn snapping on. So, similarly to GarageBand, we're just going to copy and paste things as much as we need them. Um, in the land of MIDI, copy pastes everything. Well, and then second one, add some variation. Or don't.
All right, that's a kick drum. And uh, cool. So, oh, pardon me, who are you? So you're selecting the input for that? Like you, there was a microphone on there before, was it? It was picking up my uh, computer audio. Um, this should be the kick drum. Oh, I think I know what it is. Audio output. There we go. All right. So this little VST has this thing where you can tell it to put out one channel per pad, which means that now we still don't have it. Whatever. <laughs> hey, Trump, so I, in a real, in an ideal world, it would be going out to multiple channels. Yes. It, it, does it, it, it doesn't matter. Like, could it be mapped to a different channel, like a different one lower down or something? Or, oh, because. Uh, can I open a new window? New project tab, beautiful. Um, recent messing around. So for example, um, we've got the same plugin here, right? Doing its thing, and we've got some separation. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, you know what? We're not hearing audio because you might not have shared, uh, clicked share sound again. Oh, my God. Uh, that's share sound share. Can you hear? No, really? That's not good. Oh, is uh, it because I told Reaper to use my interface? The audio interface, yeah. Having the separate tracks is cool for effects, being able to compress things. Um, and you can set the levels on each yeah. one. Yeah. And then okay. pan and stuff. Um, this is one of the tracks I made when I was practicing for this. Um, obviously, there's not much to it, but um, I just wanted to get used to using stupid MIDI stuff um but yes i don't know if it's super helpful to examine a thing that i was already working on because the process is just oh. janky i mean you could i I'm, I'm curious like how did you uh how what what the individual things are doing you know all right all right um okay so this is straight from Garage Band. Mm -hmm. It is. Oh God! I think it's me screaming into the <laughs> mic, uh -huh. and then playing it, and then re-recording the audio, but then messing with the pitch the entire time. So just dumb. Excellent. Like don't Excellent. go normal. <laughs> So 
so I think that's what the point of GarageBand is. It's your little sampler thing, you know, the microphone's good, you can record bass and guitar into it and it sounds pretty good. You can hit your pot lid, turn it into a nice little bell. Highly recommend. So that's from GarageBand. Um, and okay, this is another free, oh, not you. Oh, no, it is you. Um, this is not a free VSC I found. It is a beautiful synthesizer. Oh, you, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I've heard about this. Yeah, this I've is it's it. it works. Um, yeah, I think I just chose some random preset, messed with it a little bit, and think about accessible synth stuff is like. There's like a lot of knobs, but I feel like, well, I'll do a little rundown on basic yeah. sound building blocks later. Um, but so I made, I basically drew in random notes and then Took it, looped it, added a little variation. And this is Glide. Uh, like this is so in Reaper. You oh my can God. Automate. <laughs> for, for like beginners, like opening a window, like, like striking panic and fear. Yeah. So. <laughs> But it's you very can kind of modulate yeah. any parameter for like any plugin. If you had a delay, you'd have access to like delay time. And then it gives you this like funny little graph and you can just mess with it as you wish. So like it might look terrifying and awful, but say we had like A very AU delay, sure. Oh, what the hell? What is, what are you? Say we had a normal plugin. <laughs> Distortion, great, whatever. Not too many parameters. So what, you want to like, mess with cubic term what is this never mind so, so just ignore everything that you don't understand but basically i think it's like you can draw lines that that change the intensity of whatever it is like including the volume maybe yes. or the yeah or the level of distortion or like a filter knob might be a filter might be an, a simple one yes or moving easy. a filter knob. I could do an example. Yeah, sure. Well, or actually, just, like, I do volume. have an example. <laughs> For some people, volume is like, uh, like I don't know. For myself, it's only been in the past couple of years that I knew that you could draw like individual nodules. <laughs> you didn't have to like separate each item into, I don't know. Okay, well, this is a filter cutoff. Um, filter cutoff is the amount of, well, a filter is just like an EQ basically. And this is for the low pass filter. So say you have like a raw oscillator tone, pulling the cutoff down will let less of the highs through, uh, which you know how this patch has like a bassy, like low end sound. That's because a lot of the high has been taken off, but also with a little envelope. But automating the filter cutoff with this little line down here. And you can see 
increases. Sorry, got notifications. <laughs> so you can, see, but you could hear it like uh, the high end um, kind of appearing, like uh, th there was more like higher frequencies. Yeah, like it, it opens up. I can yeah. make it dramatic for a second. So. And automation is obviously going to create like more movement in what you're working on. Um, it's not necessary, but it is like, you know, just like one of the small nice things you can do. But in terms of like patching and stuff, like really, let's uh, let's just make a new sentence. Oh, yeah, Aaron on YouTube says that Yuha has a few free since on and I just posted a link to uh to the channels to the comments. Okay, so let's look those up. Um, let me control you via movie. Actually, you know. We're going full tank mode. Nice and slow, don't I? Yeah. No. It's always the way. It's always the way. Oh my gosh. This Didn't is what working work. with audio is like. It's just like an endless series of failures. You have to be kind of like a self. That's yeah. <laughs> all channels. I'm sending you. Okay, whatever. If anybody online knows. <laughs> it's just that one button <laughs> we don't need to make a sense from scratch it's fine okay but that was automation stuff for this patch that was just me going in here selecting one of these and then I don't know maybe moving the cutoff down or something um, and adding a silly little free chorus to it and then modulating some stuff, whatever. Um, but for real, for the notes, I actually did just go in, put it in some places. And I was like, yeah, that works, whatever. Um, a, yeah, when you're doing that, do you like have it on a loop or do you just like throw it? Yes. And, yeah. Yeah. Because um, you can loop audio in Reaper with this little handy button, toggle mm. repeat. Mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah, yeah. So, you can just go in and draw, but you can also hear while you're drawing. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know what this is. <laughs> oh, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> let's not talk about that one it's just a reverb sound and i don't want to tell someone no. start sending routing audio Complicated. Complicated we don't need routing. yeah we don't need that no um, one needs that <laughs> this is our sampler where the labels actually worked oh I've been yeah. shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's the reverb that actually works on the correct output. Um, so yeah, th that's our sampler. We've got some samples. 
I don't think I'm. That is. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't think I'm using it anywhere. So, honestly, let's start adding it. Basically, what I'm saying is. Okay, I don't know how these app ones work, so we're just going to accept it as it is. Unless it's a preset, large talk, great. Let's go. Um, okay. So I guess we're working on this track right now. Um, all right, let's hear that gross little sample. Yeah. Could sound grosser there. See what this weird thing is again. Preset. Great. Broken speaker. Oh, good. I like that. Mm. <laughs> no. Sounds unintentional. That's... <laughs> oh, it sounds like zoom audio mode. Yeah, right. I'm copying that, I'm pasting it. We're going sloppy. We're gonna paste those mini notes again. I'm so sorry that's playing in the background. I can't stop it. All right. <laughs> uh, there's some mess up here to clean up, probably. But anyway, so we have garbage noise from GarageBand, some baseline with some, you know, simple automation. And we have our silly little sampler. And what are you? I think this is another gross thing from GarageBand. It is, but what is it? I mean, how did you make it? Or it sounds great. God knows. But that's a garage band. I like to open it, sample something, and then just destroy it with effects. Modifying the pitch, modifying the playback rate. Um, it's it sounds like it's really pitched down like that, and then uh, whatever it is. Okay, I didn't mess with the playback rate here. Um, well, it's gross and ominous. We're gonna keep yeah. it. Yeah, that's great. Um, sounds like an approaching beast. Mm. All right, and we don't want to kick drum right away, so we're going to take everything and move it over. Like, uh, what's an amount? What's an amount? I mean, probably could go longer. Let him wait for it. Reaper, why are you doing this to me? I can't tell which bar this is. Where are you? So, whatever. Who cares about timing? It's not important. It's more important let's to go, not care. Let's go jazz. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it is more important to not care. Um, I feel like that's the whole basis of this like little messing around is don't care. Move it around. If it's saying stranky, 
to a bad point, maybe change it. Otherwise, yeah. What's the um, what's the line? At, like, where is the jank threshold? I mean, considering the samples I've ended up in this, like, there's no line. Like, you okay. have to keep pushing it. So it's what serves the thing in the moment or whatever, you know, like it's all kind of. But even then, okay, you can like, the thing I like about sampling um, is like just making whatever, but then carving it into what you need it to be. So like this sample, um, without any effects would probably be like harsh, hard to listen to, take up too much space. Um, but like, like, no, we're in the mode. So it's just slightly obliterated with some random three different types of delays. Um, and I think that's something that like GarageBand in itself does encourage because you can just add way too many effects to literally anything and you can resample as much as you want like resample your iPhone playing the audio and then recording that audio. Um, so yeah, I mean, what I want is for people to do the least sensible things. Cause I think it leads to the best results. And like, you don't want to just have like an 808 drum kit and I don't know, like a preset synth all the time, you have to do something disgusting, yeah. you know? Find new Record stuff. Record your mouth going like. <laughs> like your, your mouse, your, your computer mouse? <laughs> mouth. <laughs> mouth, oh, mouth. Um, I'm so sorry, but I actually do have a sample of that. Oh, your mouth. Yes. Someone on the, on the uh, Discord server was uh, talking about how to remove mouth noise from singing. And uh, here we are trying to add it in. Oh, no. Where's mouth? It's such a good sample. It's so gross. Well, I don't know where it is. You're all lucky. It's filthy. Anyways. Oh, so, so where um, are we at? Uh, someone, uh, Nigel Moss on Facebook says, I was intending to open the that you, he, her VST on my Reaper yesterday, but opened one called You Know 62 by mistake, which I didn't even know I had. Turns out there's some gorgeous old synth sounds in there, and I had a nice track coming together. And, oh, yeah, that's nice. I don't know what that you know, 62. I'll Google that and look it up. Yeah, drop a link. Um, all right, so what's happening with this track? We have, I'm just gonna hit play, see where things are at. Oh, I didn't move the bass drum, I moved the bass. Note. Let's move all of you over. Can you all hear the cat screaming? Yes. Good. Wasn't in the track. Is that no, one? that's banana. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's pacing really weird. 
was trying to do active work, but then just mess everything up. So, I mean, that's a start of something. This does not work. You're out. Is it just too wide uh, frequency range? Yeah, Is well, it's just like over? low, growly. I don't know okay. if I need that. Well, I liked okay. how the, uh, uh, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what to call it, but like when the drums, the, the regular kick came in, it was on the, it was a kind of on the, one eighth or something was like a little early or something mm. felt a little early that's and that's a byproduct of dragging and dropping all these midi <laughs> yeah like chunks go jank it's the best way to do it <laughs> all right what else okay let's open vcv rack for a minute and just Wow, banana. <laughs> What's to do vocals? Meeting. Cat wants to do vocals. Should I sample the cat? I guess you got to do it. <laughs> I think that's what you got to do. Wow, that is a crazy looking rack synthesizer. Instruo VC E frag. So I'm trying to get the cap. I yeah, I don't know if it's it's not essential. No, it's not gonna happen. It's more of a novelty. <laughs> but this 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 uh plugin looks amazing. Okay, yes, VCV rack is good. It's very free. Um and okay so when you do open it it starts with like a very rudimentary um patch setup and the thing yeah. about modular, it looks so rudimentary <laughs> yeah the thing about module is that you can't just like start moving around cables and hope it'll make sound right like you do need to know what's going on. So let's. Some of the basic uh, kind of block, like <clears throat> blocks, chunks of uh, ideas of what individual things make, like uh, some these, you know, something is a generator, so it makes sound and then others are manipulating sound. And... Yeah, exactly. That's good. But I, uh, yeah, <laughs> manually plucking and randomly, it's it never works because there's just too many combinations of things that uh, can happen. Well, that is the base patch. Are you in key? Yeah, Aaron on YouTube uh, says that VCV is one of his faves. Um, yeah, no, VCV rack is built in alpha. Nope. <laughs> Was that computer audio? 
or is that coming from the right place? Uh, that might be speaker audio. It is. Zoom audio device? Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. That works. Well, we're, um, we're not going to use much of this patch. We're just going to act like we're building a new one. All right. We're going to grab an ELPA module first. Because we want to be able to tell our audio where to go. I'm going to steal. Well, maybe we'll see. Actually, no. Action. I guess with this, like there, there must be like libraries of uh, presets that people share. Yeah. Online. For, for sure, probably. I've never yeah. looked, but yeah. Um, I think. I mean, just to get the the start to get the hang of it, or like look at the presets and see what kind of was going on. And... Well, I think the best way to kind of get into this is to actually just look at like a normalized synth, like a I don't know, like a mini mode. And just look at the signal flow for that. Like a lot of old synths, like the um, Moog MG1, the one that's made by Radio Shack, the manual for that is lovely. Like it's, I don't know if it was made for kids, but the vibe is very like, yeah. So that's a good one. It talks about sound design, um, but all the old, like since manuals do like one for the MS20 is really good. Um, and like they all talk about very generalized sound design things. And I think like, I probably should have like compiled a small list to be able to be like, you should read these things. Um, wait, how is this set up? Uh, Aaron on YouTube also he shared uh, there's a website where called um, Patch Storage PatchStorage.com and VCV Rack presets are on there. Okay, sec. Okay, we're gonna do a little uh, quick discussion about sound design. Okay, this is a voltage controlled oscillator. Um, it makes repeating wave cycles that are audible. Um, let's pull out a scope just because. This will make sense. Let's just make a oh okay. Or no, that should be going around. That's good. creating a, um, a triangle wave 
Uh, it's a little bit cut off right now, so let's just open it all the way. Um, so, yes, you can see on the scope, those are the shapes. They're named because of what they look like. Um, you'll figure out what they sound like by messing with them. Because a triangle wave and a saw wave, you can hear the difference. And the why of it is not important. Um, so the main things that create differences in sound are like filtering and oscillator shape. Or I'm uh, sorry, like filter cutoff. Um, so I got to say that's a much warmer sound than we had it opened up. So we're going to shape that audio in time using an envelope. But first we're going to put into an amplifier. Actually, you know what? No, we will. No. Uh, okay, so on the VCV website, there's like 850 free modules, which is too many, obviously. <laughs> um, so navigating that is going to be a nightmare. Uh, if anyone's trying to get into this, I'm already so sorry. Um, I can recommend all the instros stuff is really cool, but it is obscure. Um, it's weird. We'll we'll talk about the simple stuff and then we'll get into that later. All right. So. I should have like a picture of um, MS-20 up here or something. Anyways, okay. We got oscillator, sound source, filter, changing the sound of the oscillator, ADSR, um, attack, decay, sustain, release. This is our envelope and um, it's going to change the way the filter sounds over time. We're going to mold it to the amp. You don't need to know what that means yet. Okay. This is a little module that is hopefully, yep, taking my little MIDI controller control. Volper octave is just the pitch. Um, that's how it's organized in synthesizers. Well, not all of them, whatever. We're not talking about MS-20s. Um, okay. Envelope to filter cutoff. Envelope to CV1. All right, so now we have the VCO going to the VCF. The VCF is going to the VCA. The VCA is an amplifier, so it takes, it deals with amplitude. So if you want something to have a sound shape, like in terms of volume, you have to use a VCA. Uh, so let's say like, like, you know, if we didn't have the VCA in the mix, it was just like, bzzz. a VCA will allow you to control the sound amplitude over time. So this little ADSR envelope we have going here is going to control the volume of the sound source. Um, we're gonna take that 
Oh, put into our scope. Of course, we're not getting audio for whatever reason. It's not even getting to the scope. What does this mean? That's getting input. That's triggering. Oh, there we go. Ooh, that's a lovely tone. The high, the mid tones, notes. All right, so I got a little soft guy going on here. Um, ADSR is pretty self-explanatory. Um, sustain is the level. At which the note is held. The decay is the amount of time it takes to get there. So let's have, uh, And the release is just after you finish your sustain stage, you have the release stage. So this is basically like all you need to have a mono sin. Like if we open this silly guy again, um, Okay, these are LFOs. Don't even look at those. So there's the oscillator shape, which is our oscillator shapes that we're choosing. Um, I mean, we could add a second oscillator and then have like a mixer and stuff, whatever. But okay, cut off resonance, cut off resonance, envelope. Envelope. And that's for the VCA envelope. So it's like these are the building blocks for like every sense. This is all you really need to know. If you want to start building synth stuff in here, this is like basically it. Um, I will say uh, resonance is another filter thing that you kind of need to know about. And is the like, the peak, okay, so this camera. Um, say this is all frequencies. A filter is going to take uh, the frequencies back. At the front edge, there can be a bump, and that bump is resonance. Is that like harmonics? Is like, yeah, the, the resonance is. Well, at this point, I, so I don't know resonance what the, I don't can go into self oscillation, which mm -hmm. basically creates a, a tone. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn this down for a sec just to show. So. That's the, the resonance creating in its own tone by self resonant. Yeah, um, it seems it's consistent over the the entire, like whatever picture. Yeah, kind of cool thing. filters have a Volper octave input, so you can play them like uh, oscillators, but that's advanced. Don't need to know about it. Um. So yeah. Say we have, like. I was having a hard time getting the. Uh... 
let's just uh, copy some. Well, let's draw in some random numbers. Okay, I'm going to drop in a new little sense. And with our new knowledge, we are going to talk about how to modify a patch to be a bit more like what you want it to be like. Amazing. Uh, just, uh, just a heads up that uh, we should probably clue up in about 10, 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes? Yeah. God, I could do this for. I know. <laughs> we could, we could I, I, like you and I could, yeah, we could, uh, we could hang out. We should do it, actually. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, make a track. Why not? Um, yeah, maybe another time for the RPM stream, like an extended like time where we make a track with, with you or something but um anyway we'll talk afterwards uh, afterwards but uh my brain is fried blonde mm. <laughs> um we have a uh, public screening at 7 p.m so in about 40 minutes uh so, so we, we need to clue up before then that's all okay yeah. all right well we'll do a little you know since tutorial thing, then we can talk, have questions asked and answered, if that makes sense. But like, be heavy handed. If you're like, girl, stop talking, do it. Right, I'm just gonna copy some of the old thing, and we're gonna make a little, we're gonna make a little base. And we're going to talk about, well, actually, you know what? Here's the thing. I don't want to be like, a base is a base because of certain sound properties. I kind of. Bases are easy to put together because they're snappy, but Let's see. Um, I feel like generally with synths, people will just like scroll through presets, find something that they like, and then kind of adjust it to fit exactly what they want it to be like. So we chose one that I don't know, had bass in the name, Uno Bass. And it's probably gonna sound awful. Oh, it's lagging. Let me close VCV. 2014 MacBook Air. Awful. Immediately better. Yeah, cool. Like legit. That's all it takes to make a bass sound. And like, I don't know, if you're gonna make like a nice like patty thing or I don't know. All I'm saying is messing around with very few parameters can make what you want exist very quickly. And like, well, we could talk about this for a second, but this is So one of the things in back is like self-generating patch things. Um, but this is not something that we could get into in this unless we had hours. <laughs> um, so it's just like creating its own sound and feeding it back into itself and create, yeah, yeah, like a weird, weird beast. Yeah, and like, 
that's just me messing around and putting cables everywhere. But experimentation is very important. <laughs> it's key. <laughs> um, all right, are we gonna do anything more to this track? I'd I'd love to hear hear it again. Yeah, I feel like I can't I can't I was trying to add more noise and it just wasn't working. I was just You know, you start building it up, start adding more drums, add some weird little leads, sample your cat meowing, add distortion, <laughs> mess with the pitch. And like drums for the electronic music, simple. You just make the kick drum go, go all the time. Go a little <laughs> bit and then go all the time. <laughs> a little bit all the time then take it away yes. it <laughs> yeah and you barely need that snare drum you know right yeah i feel like what i wanted to come out of this with is like a primer of tools that you can like look at learn mess around with I didn't mess around on my telephone enough. It was hard to be on there. It's hard to be on there. Yeah. I think GarageBand is, yeah, you just have to mess around. It's a great, it's showing it as a, as a great tool for sampling and mani like manipulating on, on the go. <laughs> yeah. It, it is, it's useful. Uh, Cause I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try it. I'm going to download GarageBand. No, it's Never like had. pretty wild. This, the sampling thing I think is like, one of the funniest things possible um because like the effects sound pretty good um and then just air dropping it to your computer it's just like it's cute <laughs> like a little yeah. gift that you sent to yourself yeah <laughs> Well, Anna, I mean, like, uh, do you, uh, I don't know if there are any other questions. Uh, yeah, Aaron on YouTube says wild track and uh, yeah, says the, yeah, it was, also it was mentioning about this self-generation, self-generated VCR, VCV uh, <laughs> uh, uh, kits are pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, in your act, like it's, so popular that you can just search like, I don't know, google.com, self-generative, mm -hmm. your act patches, you'll find like the same five modules in everyone's kit and you'll be like, I know what that is now, I can search up on PCP. Right. In there. You could probably ask chat GPT the same question. <laughs> oh my God, it's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a, yeah. How could I set up a Eurorack kit that, or, or a patch that does this or something? I don't know. Mm -hmm. How would you even convey it? Anyway. Anyway, oh, one. The world's our oyster. One thing about VCV is linking it to Reaper um, is not possible 
on the current version unless you have like a paid version. Oh, okay. So I just add a little recorder and then do the same thing I do with GarageBand where I just import the waves. <laughs> Recommend it. Basically, take all these janky little softwares and throw them into Reaper, copy and paste, have fun with that. That's that's what I really want people to uh, to come away with this from. Sense of the uh, experimentation, having fun, not caring. You know. Perfect. Mm. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Anna. This has been really awesome. Um, yeah, do you have uh, anything else that you'd like to add before we sign off? Anything you'd like to say to the, the viewers? Mm. Um, <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, do, is, where, can, where can people hear your music? Or uh, um, is there a way for, for them to find you? Oh, our stuff is on like streaming services, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can literally search HRT on Spotify or Apple Music and it should come up. Okay. All right, I'll share a link. As far as I know, I may be wrong. Anyway, there's a band camp. I see a, yeah, a connective one. Oh, don't listen to that. Don't listen, listen to that one? The live live record live slash drag okay i'll place that in the uh in the chat thank you amazing well yeah. thank you very much uh pleasure um, and uh yeah maybe an extended stream sometime yeah i think it'd be really fun to go from pan lid to <laughs> yes finished product. dark electronic music <laughs> 15 minute track yeah it would be yeah some other time all right well uh everybody out there thanks for watching and uh yeah if you're in canada you're able to uh, claim a free ticket to watch a uh, uh, documentary uh the devil and daniel johnson it's, ha uh, it's taking place uh in half an hour from now um at 7 p.m it's a live stream as well so um you can join the chat and talk uh talk to each other uh you can find that at nickelfestival.com slash rpm and uh get a free ticket anyway see you guys thanks anna again and uh good luck with the rpms everybody